Hey everyone, and welcome to another Innistar the Modeler. If you've been following my channel, you've seen that I've built a variety of projects over the last 12 months. As 2015 comes to a close, I thought it'd be fun to show you most of these one more time. So, I've created this video as a review of my builds from 2015. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's go ahead and get our review started. At the beginning of the year, I built a Space 1999 Eagle by Round 2. This essentially is the same kit that was released by MPC way back in the 70s, with the exception of a new decal sheet that allows you to add some detailing to the ship. This build included also some scratch building and modification, lighting, and also creating a customized stand. The scratch building and modifications included opening up the cages, which always come solid. These are just solid pieces here that don't allow you to look through. Uh, the one thing about the studio model is that the cages were open, and this allowed me then to uh, open them up and create some scratch built detailing on the interior. And I also added some scratch building here to the engines. The other modification was utilizing some pieces from SciHighModels.com, and those are these baffles that you see here in the engine bells. This build also included some lighting. I was able to light up the cockpit here, and you can see as I shade it a little bit, the cockpit is lit. And uh, also, it's an example of the decals that are included in the new decal sheet, uh, which are the pictures of the pilots that you see there. The customized stand here is uh, stylized after the landing pad that you see on the television show. Again, this is an Eagle by Round 2. It's still available out in the market. And uh, Round 2, by the way, is coming out with a new version of the Eagle, which is going to be 22 inches long. So the next build to show you here is a replica of the ship from Oblivion. This is a kit that's produced by a company called Fantastic Plastic. It's what we call a garage kit, so this is not widely available at any store. You just have to find them online. You can go to their website and order it. And uh, this model measures about 7 inches in length. So this particular build served as an example of what it's like to work with a resin kit. It had been a while since I'd worked with resin. And uh, the one thing that I did learn here was never to use super glue with clear parts because it caused the clear parts to cloud over. It's something I should have known. Um, I really didn't know that. And, uh, but you can prevent that from coating it with Futura or just simply not using super glue when you're working with clear parts. The model is a decent replica of the ship that you see in the movie. Again, this movie is called Oblivion. It stars Tom Cruise. I believe it came out uh, last year, or at least a couple years ago. And um, the uh, other thing that I did with this build was create a customized stand for this one as well. Uh, this is something that I found at a local drugstore. I just thought it looked kind of futuristic to me. Just painted it silver. And then I also, for the first time, created a customized decal. And that's what you see here as this landing pad, or this is something that I created on my computer. Unfortunately, it didn't quite come out as well as I wanted it to. I used a special liquid to uh, coat the decal with, but it came out kind of splotchy, so I won't be doing that again. But um, nonetheless, it still serves as a functional stand for the ship. So again, this is the ship from the movie Oblivion. And yeah, next up is the ship from Johnny Quest. This is made by Mobius Models. This is called the Dragonfly. And uh, Johnny Quest is a 1960s animated series about a boy who uh, encounters all kinds of adventures as he travels the world with his dad. Uh, this is the ship that they travel around in. It's a supersonic jet. And um, this is uh, something I'm sure has been on people's wish list for many years. This model served basically as a straight out of the box build with the exception of adding some lighting. Uh, the lighting I added here was a flickering LED here for the engines and I also intended on adding some interior lighting as well. Unfortunately the LED that I placed inside there was defective. It actually blew out even though it had a resistor. Um, it still does glow so you can see a little bit of glow there. My intention however was to have more lighting shine through both the front uh, cockpit area and through these windows which I had drilled out. So you can see that the model kit does create a very nice display of the ship that we see on the animated TV series. So again, this is the Dragonfly from Mobius Model. So next up is a replica of a Boba Fett helmet. This is a kit I purchased off of eBay for my son. And it comes as a single cast of the helmet itself, along with the additional pieces you need to create the ear pieces on each side of the helmet, as well as this piece here that lowers down. The build served as an example of how to use masking fluid to create this layered paint scheme uh, to replicate the battle-damaged and worn look of the helmet. And the uh, face shield that you see here, this darker shield in the center, uh, was made by a different company, and that's what they do. They exclusively make shields for these types of helmets. 
So again, this is a replica of the Boba Fett helmet from Star Wars. And up next we have my favorite project of the year. This is the conversion of the Hasbro Millennium Falcon. This is a toy that was exclusively available at Walmart for the 2014 holiday season. And it became quickly known that if you painted and detailed the ship, you'd end up with a pretty nice model of the Millennium Falcon. In order to carry out the conversion, I had to utilize scratch building. Uh, I had to extensively scratch build these panels that you see along the side. This here was included with the model. Uh, but all this here was blank, and the model came with stickers that were supposed to be utilized here for this detailing. The conversion also utilized some extra parts, uh, particularly a kit available from Randy Cooper. This is a photo etch set that allowed me to uh, install this grill that you see back here. And also 3D parts, uh, or 3D printed parts, uh, which include this part here uh, for the cockpit that replaced the original cone that came with the model. The other pieces that were included in the photo etch set I should point out as well are these grills that you see here uh, along these exhaust ports. Taking a minute here just to show you the underside of the ship. Um, I utilized uh, pastels and a Tamiya weathering kit uh, to duplicate the patterns that you see on the original miniature. And also the uh, battery that powers the lights uh, is held in this section here which is just perfect for holding this 9 volt battery. Some of the pieces that I purchased from Randy Cooper, and he was kind enough just to sell me these here separately, are the covers uh, that I utilize for the uh, uh, landing gear bays. Uh, the original landing gear were just blocks that were molded into the ship that had to be cut out. The customized stand that you see here was produced by utilizing a wood plaque and some styrene plastic. And it was stylized, of course, to resemble uh, the kinds of patterns that you see in the movie. Also included are four LEDs that help illuminate the underside of the ship. Fortunately, this toy is no longer available at Walmart. Uh, the only source I can see these days is eBay. And unfortunately, the price has jumped up to over $100. And I say it that way because when I purchased this, it uh, had dipped down to as low as 20 bucks after the 2014 holiday season. So again, this is the conversion of the Hasbro Millennium Falcon. And next up we have a replica of the Ark from the 1950s movie, When Worlds Collide. This model measures 10 inches in length from front to back and is made by Pegasus Models. So this was mainly a straight out of the box build, um, but it did allow me for the first time to use a scribing tool. The tool was necessary in order to, to uh, preserve the panel lines that you see here because the model does come in two halves and you have to use putty to address that seam. This build also incorporated lighting. You can see I installed lighting along the base just to make it a little bit more interesting. The base is supposed to represent a rocky surface and in order to add a little more detailing here, I also added the foliage that you see. And of course the base includes the track that the model sits on. So again, this is the arc from the movie When Worlds Collide. And next up are prop replicas now from the Space 1999 universe. Uh, these kits are produced by a gentleman by the name of Alex Jackson. You can still get a hold of these kits. In fact, he's actually made some uh, updated versions of these kits. Again, this build serves as an example of working with garage resin kits. Uh, these, of course, require some putting because many resin kits do come with surface defects. What we have here is the Comlock. This is a device they used to communicate with on the show. And next to it is the stun gun, or the laser. And this weapon comes with two settings, stun and kill. And uh, this comes with this switch here that I was able to modify with the use of magnets. The magnets allows the sliding switch to stay on and uh, gives you the ability to slide it back and forth this way. So these kits are always fun to do. It's a little bit different than typical model kits that you build. And one of the things I do like doing is collecting replicas of props from different TV shows. And next up we have the Colonial One from the reimagined Battlestar Galactica series. This model is produced by Mobius Models. This model makes a very decent replica of the ship that you see on the TV show. Um, I added some interior lighting and also built this customized stand with LEDs that shine up at the model. And the stand serves, as, again, as an example of how you can create something out of uh, a piece that's inexpensive. This is something I got, again, at a local drugstore. It's essentially a drawer organizer turned upside down here. The stand was painted black, and a piece of styrene plastic was used to cover uh, this top section here, and a scribing tool was used to create the grid patterns. 
So again, this is the Colonial One from the Reimagined Battlestar Galactica series. And the final model I'm going to highlight in this review here is the Mark 9 Warhawk from the Space 1999 TV series. This again is another garage kit. It's fairly large. It measures about 22 inches in length from front to back. It's supposed to be a 148 representation scale of the ship that we see on the TV show. And it uh, should be in scale with the um, Round 2 Eagle that's going to be coming out here shortly. And again, this serves as another example of working with resin. Um, as with most resin kits, the model came with a lot of surface defects that you have to treat with putty. And um, also uh, included in this build was um, some scratch building on the exterior. Uh, added some detailing here along the engines and uh, also all these pipes that you see here and some detailing along the uh, underside. Also scratch built was the cockpit interior. Uh, included here are two pilots that I purchased off of eBay. They are 148 inch scale and the cockpit is lit by an LED. And the other thing that this allowed me to do was to create a complete customized decal sheet for this model. Since the model does not come with any of these markings, uh, rather than painting them, I decided to try my hand at creating a customized decal sheet. Uh, the decals work real well to replicate the markings that you see in the original studio model. And additional decals were created for the underside of the ship. If you're not familiar with the series Space 1999, again it's a series that was produced in the late 70s, and as a model builder, uh, it's a great opportunity to see uh, practical effects that were done with models and um, things of that nature. Uh, this was of course in a time before CGI uh, effects were available. One other model that I did build this year was the Force Awakens Resistance X-Wing Fighter that was built as a gift so I no longer have that one. So I hope you enjoyed this review here. Um, if you have any questions feel free to contact me here at my YouTube channel. As always, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you tuning into my channel here. I have, uh, of course, other projects that are waiting in the wings for 2016. So I wish you guys all the best this holiday season and for a happy new year. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.